So uh, coming on the subsidy issue, maybe Devashish uh, from O Energy would like to throw some more light on the specific subsidy related issues which they have faced and some of his recommendation about how it can be improved further. See, uh, let me introduce uh, Onergy to you. Onergy uh, was founded in 2009, and as on date, we are impaneled under various nodal agency up to 20 megawatt of power, rooftop only. Out of which, in last, we, we got the subsidy approvals and impanelment in the month of February and March 2017, and we have almost done around 2.5 megawatt till date. The idea of getting into subsidy program were two. One is to provide customers with a sustainable power and sustainable system. And secondly, to you know encourage the customers to get into rooftop solar. These were the two primary objectives for which we got impaneled. Coming into the challenges of putting up a uh, rooftop solar under uh, subsidy scheme. See, today, uh, any kind of a rooftop solar requires a capital investment. Now, subsidy programs are meant for non-commercial institutions who are not making any profits. Now, it comprises of schools, transports, uh, a few hospitals, uh, religious institutions, and other places. The issue which uh, they face primarily, see the typical size of these plants ranges from 10 kilowatt up to 100 kilowatt. Now, uh, so there are plenty of schools which we have come across where uh, the actual requirement of the school is 50 or 60 kilowatt for which they will become beneficial if they come in terms of installing, on the installing a rooftop solar. But unfortunately, the schools do not have that facility of getting uh, that amount of fund from any sources. Banks, uh, what uh, he had referred earlier, that State Bank of India has come up uh, with the 650 million fund which has been offered from Asian Development Bank. Uh, last week, we had a, a detailed uh, discussion and uh, Mo also been signed with uh, State Bank of India. Unfortunately, they are not providing loan to any of these non-commercial institutions who are most interested uh, in getting a solar on their rooftop. So what is end of the day happening that one, and on one hand, uh, whenever we get into subsidy programs, two things necessarily happen. As an EPC contractor or EPC company, we are bound to provide them with a sustainable and a quality product because we are supposed to provide them with a tier one product. So end of the day, the product, whichever we supply, we necessarily go and have a uh, lifetime of around 25 years. So we are doing our best to do that. But in order to get, get, get that for the users, it is becoming very difficult. So here one company, those companies who are into RESCO can come into it. So we had approached a lot of RESCO companies into that, uh, RESCO companies uh, for you know funding of this non-commercial uh, cases. But unfortunately what we are finding, the challenge which we are finding that nobody is ready to do it. Nobody, none of the RESCO companies in India are ready to do it. So today uh, if we talk of two things, uh, one is Solar uh, as a product we should provide as a company, we should provide with uh, good quality products and have a sustainable life of the product. We should provide the customers with Taiwan product. Number two, the customer should be benefited with subsidy. So the customer will be more interested in saving power and having a subsidy. They will, uh, uh, you know, will be much more interested in this kind of a product. But on the other hand, to avail the product, there is no facility, there is no financial aid by means he, uh, he can get, he or she can get that uh, product uh, installed at his rooftop. So this is one of the major challenge what we face. Second thing which I'd also like to mention here is that uh, after you know getting the rooftop installed, their all nodal agencies have a uh, clause where you they would inspect the site and get it certified that that has been done as per their clause, as per the contract agreement which we are, or the empire, uh, contract agreement which we have. Now after this is over and all, you know, uh, statutory liabilities or uh, statutory uh, guidelines been met, 
The typical paperwork by the nodal agencies are taking more than two to three months and there is no justification being given why it is so. Supposedly, I, am on, I won't name any of the nodal agencies, but we have completed projects in the month of you know, April. Uh, site examination is over, inspection is over, it has been clarified and it, we have given a you know, completion certificate for that. When it comes to subsidy, then they have, you know, they put up certain clauses or it is now off the record what they say that, well, uh, it should come in a cumulative way. If you have 100 cases with you, then we are going to uh, reimburse this thing or disburse this subsidy to you. Now, the user supposedly has put up at 15 uh, kilowatt plant on its rooftop. The subsidy which is supposed to get does, doesn't come in time. And we, we been an EPC company, you know, get stuck up with that subsidy 30% or 50%, whatever it is, we get stuck up in that. So there, you know, we have spoken to a lot of subsidy, uh, this uh, nodal agencies for that, where they of late have promised that we are going to get the subsidy done or the subsidy disbursement directly to the user within 15 days after uh, the whole uh, formalities pertaining to documentation and uh, uh, commissioning is over. So we are hopeful on that, but we haven't got any result on that as of date. So these are the two main obstacles and uh, again I would repeat that the uh, finance part, if there is uh, RESCO people come forward a bit for subsidy cases, funding subsidy cases, I feel that uh, people will be beneficial. Thank you. Uh, thank you Devashish, uh, uh, very well said. I think that subsidy thing, it's just a matter of time, maybe it may take another one year or so, it will be phased out totally. So I don't think there should be any issue. And regarding the financing part which you mentioned, I was in fact uh, lucky enough to be there in one of the uh, programs organized by SBI where they, uh, they have actually uh, put for a 100 megawatt uh, sanction which they have done under the rooftop scheme. There it was, uh, 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 some of the developers have very categorically asked SBI. Uh, it's not only government, it's a lot of private customers which require uh, funding and more of rescue is happening with industrial and commercial customers. And there are specific ratings which they talk about. Although uh, triple, B, triple B is also in, uh, triple B minus is also an investment grade in India. But uh, if you see most of the open access project, if you go for funding uh, to the lenders, they will say, uh, the project has to be uh, only a minus they are not going to fund a project less than a minus or or it has to be it has to be a, a ratio of 90 to 10 90 percent of your client should be a minus and 10 percent can be a mixture of triple b b plus so i think that will uh, that will not solve the purpose because anyhow the power requirement whether it's a triple b minus or a, a plus or a, a everybody has a power requirement so for uh, commercial customers one thing good which sbi has done if you have if you have anybody have come across the recent guidelines which sbi have put up i have i have seen that uh, it is just like you know getting a uh, uh, loan what you get for a uh, automobile vehicle or a, uh, for an automobile they are providing up to 80% with a uh, interest rate ranging from 8 to 9% and almost all of the commercial institutions can have this loan availed. Then the procedure is also very simplified. Now the only thing is that uh, the, this I've, ch um, I've checked in Kolkata because we are located in Kolkata. Uh, the SME uh, office in Kolkata the, uh, headquarters, they have reached us. Uh, it will be done from the headquarter level, not from the branch level. That is what they say that we will slightly after two, three months, we also bring this whole loan arrangement at the branch level. But they seem to be quite proactive on this. We have already approached a number of commercial clients and uh, their cases have already gone to SBI and they are pretty quick on, you know, acting on this. But for the subsidy again, there is no facility. So that's a good news for all of us. I. I hope it happens in in a year's time because SBI takes its own sweet time to process the loans. So, so, uh, so we are done with the discussion. We are open to the, the questions from the audience. Uh, my first question is to Dhiraj. You spoke about the skill sets. Uh, do you have any plan? Any idea of the skills that your this uh, solar industry requires? 
otherwise i'll suggest you something yeah you can suggest but from our side from our organization side we have already started one uh, institute for the labors where labors can get trained uh, we have set up this in mumbai itself where a demo uh, solar project they can be able to install and from nut and bolts to the highest level they can get this information that how a solar project has to be executed because the solar project is a modular uh, kind of nature whatever is happening in a 5 acres thing that same thing is going to repeat in the 300 acres so that's the first part the second is we have a gurukul at site scheme in which we give the knowledge to the laborers working at the site of the different varieties and whichever the labor is supposed to do we make them expertise in that like if somebody is doing some kind of civil work we make them expert in the civil work and parallelly will uh, enhance his knowledge on the electrical and other fronts also so that's the two things which is happening for our organization side rest you can uh, okay. uh, suggest as a governing council member of indian uh, uh, solar energy society of india also a master trainer from electronic sector skill council of india we are already developing centers of excellence in renewable energy and energy efficiency on a pan india basis the first such center within a month or two months will start in delhi itself you know the biggest challenge today is to provide the electronic related skills because the, you know putting up panels doing all those things is okay but at the end of the day very few people have the electronic skills on how to integrate the different different components that we have been listening since morning so this is one of the things that is very important where you know electronics has to play a major role in any product uh, in any project that we are going to do and i would suggest that uh, you know the organizers also take a proactive interest in these kind of things and we need to provide the skills at various levels the next sure. question is to devashish uh, can i ask yes please okay uh, first of all you have given very good information on the solar rooftops thank you sir uh, one thing which i still feel india has a long way to go where i am also going to discuss in my panel discussions on the energy storage solar and energy storage both combined together make a very good business case abroad it has already started working i would love to see you do something like that and i'm willing to be a partner and assistant in this thank you very much yes sir certainly we are already empaneled under jireda where we are supposed to you know uh, supply solar rooftops under off grid solar rooftops so definitely for the storage technology we would require experts like you we will uh, so out of the forum we will get connected sir thank you any more questions thank you um so my question is uh, to the panelist who was mentioning that jnsm phase 1 and 2 most of the pro projects are not generating anything what's the source of this data because we've been analyzing the plant performance and that's not what the data is speaking so if i could know the source of the information please yeah uh, i haven't uh, told you that it's not generating right i haven't said that it is not generating it is generating okay there are few cases where the plant has failed i don't want to mention in this uh, gathering which are the plants which has failed totally failed when i say failed means okay there are plants which are uh, just operating just for the you know 10 20% there is if you ask me why there's a technical reason behind it is uh, some of these plants have already uh, undergone pid issues potentially induced degradation has already happened in these plants and we have physically tested these plants i can give you a proof offline okay i'll i'll connect offline because would love to know in detail thank you there's a question here good afternoon sir thanks for your discussion well uh, from the specs point of uh, view there are multiple solar devices multiple solar panels are coming up in the market what is that one specs that all the solar panels are following or because there are with uh, value added uh, technologies 
anti coating and all those ones are which is the specs that is followed here that are all are following that's the same specs for installing for even from sourcing point of view see what has happened is now in the solar market basically as per mnre guidelines or you look at the global uh, standards you need to follow iec 61215 and 61730 this is a mandatory requirement for any panels to come to india okay is it whether you export i mean imported from china or from europe anywhere else okay and there are labs here who are also testing for the indian manufacturers as per these standards this is a basic requirement once you qualify for this requirement there is another agencies which uh, try to uh, rate as bankable modules and all that stuff now this is based on certain parameters in which they uh, rate these panels as per 2016 uh jinko was leading earlier it was rina which was leading and here what they do is you need to have the entire value chain while you are doing this panel manufacture right from the cell manufacturing then uh, you have all those things you know then r and d setups and how much you have exported and what is it current turn or all this all said and done if you ask me which is the best panel today you will have to go to that site and see <laughs> which is tier 1 tier 2 and then go ahead all said and done but even a tier 1 will fail if you are not going to i mean uh, take care of a lot of things in that so it's very difficult to answer at this juncture but there is going to be something which is coming up by this end end of this year uh, you might like to know which panel is suitable for which type of climate conditions for example a hot and humid climate you would like to have only these panels not okay. these other panels which will not give you that much of output or maybe it degrades faster than that so that data is still not available worldwide that experiments are going on in sahara deserts uh, antarctica and all those places once this test is done for a year or so probably you will have some data which is available for you to at least say okay these panels are okay for my country okay. thank you sir so with that we'll wrap up this session i thank all the panelists for uh, making this session very interesting and i take the opportunity to uh, invite mr rai to present a token of appreciation to each and every panelist it's mr p s arun kumar from tata projects mr devashish dhar from onergy mr dheeraj malani from mahindra sustain and that's mr satya vinjamuri from kotrej and pradeep shrikanthan from reddington and i'll take the opportunity myself to present it to mr rai